Wittenstein High Integrity Systems presents Coffee Break Training. This video extends the previous session on MPU usage and looks at an alternative method to pass variables into tasks. It also briefly considers how to debug issues when using the MPU. More information and additional training sessions can be found on our website. Follow us on Twitter at Wittenstein underscore Hiss for updates on new training sessions. Global data is often undesirable. Here we consider the same system as the previous video, where two tasks want to communicate via a queue, but look at a way to avoid using a global variable to share the queue handle. If the queue can be created prior to the tasks, then the queue handle can be passed to each task via the task parameters. This has two main benefits. Firstly, no MPU region is required. And secondly, there's no global data structure shared between the tasks. This improves the isolation. For example, corruption of the variable in one task doesn't affect the behaviour of the other task. This slide shows the task parameters used when a task is created. We walk through these in the Introducing Tasks video. The key parameter we're interested in this case is the field passed to the task function. This is a void type, so it can be used to pass a queue handle or structure containing many individual elements. In this example, we're simply using it to pass a pointer to the queue handle xpolled queue. The queue must be correctly set up before the task is created, otherwise this will be pointing to an invalid address. This shows the task function code and how the queue handle is then extracted from the arguments passed into it. These arguments will be passed in registers or on the task stack. However, once passed in, they need to be copied to a local version of the variable. If this isn't done, when the parameters are passed into further function calls within the task, they will be dereferenced. The variables pointed to, for example the queue handle, are in global memory to which the unprivileged task has no access. The copying of data onto or from a queue is possible because it's done by a kernel call which raises the privilege prior to the operation and lowers it again afterwards. We've considered two approaches to allowing two tasks to share access to a queue. Comparing these approaches, we can see that the global variable approach has a simpler code structure and is also easier to trace through the code to see which tasks share a queue as they have to access it by the same variable name. However, it requires an MPU region and any one task could corrupt the shared queue handle. Passing parameters into each task means that each task has its own copy of the variable. As an additional benefit, no MPU region is required as no global data is accessed. The downside is that the task setup is more complex and that the order of task and queue creation is important. It can also make it harder to trace which tasks access a particular queue. When developing application code, in particular if converting existing code to make use of the MPU functionality by running in unprivileged mode, it's not unusual to see the MPU exception handler being hit. The two most common causes are stack overflow, or trying to access global data that is not within a permitted MPU region. The Safe RTOS demo applications provide an example MPU fault handler. This helps with debugging by showing the program counter value that causes the MPU exception. If a breakpoint is set at this location, it should be possible to examine the registers to work out what address is being accessed and causing the MPU fault. If the memory location being accessed appears to be within the program data section, it can then be helpful to cross-reference this with the mapper file to see which object that data item is from. This concludes our Coffee Break training session on MPU usage. It's a very powerful hardware function when correctly used and is much easier to understand by working through some example code, for example, which ships with our demos. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit our website at highintegritysystems.com or follow us on Twitter at Wittenstein underscore Hiss for updates on further training sessions.